Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Everyone's okay? Yeah, I hope oh, I'm doing well. Thank you. Hope all the online students are doing good. And welcome to all the students at the e learning course as well. Uh, shall we just start with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you, God, that you have brought each one of us here. Open our minds, our hearts to get into your word to really understand further about how you've instituted marriage. Even as we look into the roles of marriage, we pray, Lord, that um, your word, Lord, will settle itself in our hearts and we would walk in obedience with it. Be with each one of us attending. Lord, may we be here alert and participatory. Thank you, God, that the Spirit works in and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So, which chapter are we on today? Okay, chapter four. And we're looking at understanding roles of a husband and a, a, a wife. And uh, last week, mm, we looked at an important part of making... Uh, of of how we make a choice, right? And I think I left each of you with a homework. Yes? Okay. What was the homework? Nobody remembers? Yes, Vimal? I'd asked you to write down expectations that you had, no? Yeah? Yeah, it is. It's in progress. Okay, it's in process. Okay. What about the others? For those of you who are not married. Huh? You have a lot of expectations. You wrote, can't write. Huh? Pages. Pages. Pages of expectations. Okay. Maybe it's good to, to start writing a few. Yes. Okay. Uh, online students, anyone took the effort to actually write it down? And I hope I'll hear from the e-learning students as well. Yes, Abhishek says yes. So, Abhishek, would you like to share one or two expectations you have if it isn't too personal? Nothing much, Pastor. Uh... Nothing much. Yeah, just like the uh, first exp expectation is like, uh, uh, at least uh, she will help me in ministry. That she would help you in ministry? Yeah. Is that what the, that's what the expectation is. Okay. This, All right. Uh, anybody, sorry? Nothing, Pastor, nothing. I'm not able to hear. Uh... Okay, all right, so let's let's keep going. Let's get into chapter four. And chapter four is about understanding roles of a husband and a wife. Okay, so um, what this entire chapter will focus on is instructions that the Bible gives on the roles of a husband and, uh, and a wife. So, you know, we were looking at... Um, in the initial chapter, we were looking at becoming one. So one way to move into that oneness is to fulfill your own roles in marriage, right? And that's what propels a couple to move into oneness. So this entire chapter is um, to understand what God really wants and expects of the husband and wife and how do those roles play out towards each other towards marriage and towards the family. Okay, so that's what we are going to be looking at. What does God see and what are uh, biblical guidelines that are there available to us um, in, in, uh, for, the, for the roles that have been assigned to us and how does that show out? So we will look at a couple of scriptures and look at some practical aspects of how that could also be done. Okay, now before we begin, I, it's important to establish one very important truth in marriage. And what is that truth? That both the husband and the wife 
are equals, they are joint heirs and interdependent. Okay? Uh, they're equal, they're joint heirs of all the spiritual blessings or the graces that God has gifted to them. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Can somebody read that out, please? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse For, 7. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the same goes for you, husbands. Be good husbands to your wives. Honor them. Delight in them. As women, they lack some of your advantages. But in the new life of God's grace, you are equals. Treat your wives then as equals so your prayers don't run aground. Okay. So what does the word equals mean? You are in the same standing. Right? There is no one above the other. So in God's eyes, both the husband and the wife are equals. And not, not, not only are they equals, but then they treat each other as the way God sees them, which are what? As equals. Yes? Are we all here? Yeah. Come back. Come back. Wherever you all are, come back. Okay, so not only do we look at each other as equals, but also treat each other as equals. Now, there is another verse that talks about uh, of how we are to be interdependent on each other. So someone can read First Corinthians chapter 11, verses 11 to 12. Uh, Ma'am, after this, I just have one question on the previous verse. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. Uh, First Corinthians 11, 11, 12. In our life in the Lord, however, woman is not independent of man nor is man independent of woman. For as woman was made from man, in the same way man is born of a woman. And it is God who brings everything into existence. I'll take your question. So what does it say over here? What does interdependent mean? Yeah, so you have to uh, depend on some on the other person, right? Uh, let me give you an example. Have you seen you know, cows in a field, and you'll see birds on top of the cows. What is happening there? What's uh, Yes, and? So are, is only the cow being helped? Birds also getting food, no? So you see how interdependence is? Yeah? Okay, I know that's a very far off example. But nevertheless, what I'm trying to bring about is the willingness to draw from what the other person can do for you. Now, suppose the cow said, you can't sit on my back, all right? Or the bird, uh, yeah, and, and it said, you know, you can't eat the food that uh, I have on my body. It doesn't say that, right? They depend on one another. It is what is called as interdependence. So that's exactly what God wants. In the way that God sees family and marriage, it is not one being dependent on another or one or both being independent of each other, but both being interdependent. That's what interdependent is. I depend on you, you depend on me, we draw from each other's qualities and strengths and skills. Okay? All right. Yes, a good question. The Bible itself says, as women, uh, they lack some of your advantages. What is it actually referring to? So. What it talks about is when, uh, if, if you're looking at it as a physical sense, the the man may be stronger, or in in let's say in strength or in ability, physical ability, physical stronger, right? And so, whereas a woman is not, so that's what he's referring to over here. Okay, all right. So here, uh, and and this. This understanding or this truth about equals, about being joint heirs, about being interdependent is uh, often a challenge for men sometimes to swallow, right? Uh, what do we some see in our culture? Yes, we may see, our, we come from patriarchal homes where maybe the male member is the decision maker, is the strong person, is the one who is controlling. And as a result, maybe the woman in the house or the women are not really given a voice. Maybe that's the kind of culture that we come from. Or men are a lot more dominating. But what does the Bible say over here? That we are to consider what God has said. So because of our social and cultural settings, we sometimes very uh, subtly ease into this 
understanding that you know we're not equals that i'm i'm greater uh, than than my wife or uh, i'm i'm lesser than my husband but what does god say here god has instituted equal worth value to both a man, ability to both man and woman just that the roles are different the way that we play out those roles are different okay so let's align ourselves to what the word of god says maybe we come from a culture that doesn't uh, see it that way but the call is to align ourselves to what the word of god teaches us okay all right okay so let's move straight into um, into the roles um and what i'd like to do is um i'll probably call out a couple of verses and you know as we read those verses we will look at each of the roles that god's instituted for the husband or the or the wife okay so um let's look at ephesians chapter 5 verses 21 to 23 right now i know there's a whole lot to read but i'm just going to bring about some verses that pertain to roles of both a husband and a wife okay so ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 can someone read out 23 ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 the husband provides leadership to his wife the way christ does to his church okay so what what is the role that you see here for the husband what is it a leader right and the leadership is to his wife there is a comparison here what is the comparison the way christ is to his church and how should it not be done what does it say there not by domineering by, but by cherishing not by domineering which means not by controlling not by uh, force not by uh, you know powerful authority but by cherishing okay so let's look at what what it means to be a, a leader so when a husband is placed as a leader in the home uh what is the quality that makes them that leader why did god choose them as leaders correct but was there a specific quality that made them leaders that that god did okay it is just god place them divinely as a leader just like you know when you were in school one of you would have been chosen as a monitor no why were you chosen as a monitor randomly you must have just been chosen right your teacher saw okay and sometimes the naughtiest are the ones who are chosen no as monitors <laughs> okay so so it is by god divinely placed a man to be the leader of the home and uh, what does this what does this mean this is yes the the god given authority that a man has over his wife it is placed upon him to have that authority and this leadership it is an example that the husband needs to look to is to the way christ is to the church so how does christ lead the church by what by love what else cherishing why did the lord come to to give himself right to serve he came to serve right and that's exactly what a husband is also called to do as you have that divine placement that authority you're also called to love you're also called to serve which means you are a responsible person in that unit of the family okay so uh, through love when you are called to um uh, be a husband of love you lead in love how how does someone lead in love if you need to lead in love what should you be huh submissive okay you need to have a a character that is strong a faith that is strong right if you need to lead your family or your wife in that love you're looking for a, a person who has the character that god puts in that the love the the compassion the abilities that god has placed inside of you so god has placed a lot of abilities inside young men here here right and that's what god wants you to use okay now 
does it always mean that being the head is that you're always will be right? Okay, so if you are not right, what would you be willing to do? Ask help from your spouse. Okay, right? Yeah, ask help from the spouse or even, uh, you know, look for ways of getting your support from your spouse. So it doesn't always have to mean that you have to be right or that you are always right. And um, you must be able, as a husband, walk in agreement with your spouse getting her opinions, understanding what, what are her thoughts, and then coming to a place of working together. So it's not about uh, who is superior, who is inferior. What does scripture say? In Ephesians 5.21, it says, submit to one another. Ephesians 5.21 says, submit to one another. That is, so it, it applies to both the husband as well as the wife, which is to submit. Okay? All right. Let's go to the next one. Uh, verse 25. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 25. Let's read that. Ephesians 5, verse 25. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Okay. What is the role here? Verse 25. What should the husband do? Love, love the wife. Love the wife. And yeah, what does it say? Go all out in your love for your wives. That is what? Not partially, not little bit. Not konjam konjam. But go all out in, in love for, for your wives. Okay, what kind of love? Huh? The Christ kind of love. And that is what? The agape love, unconditional love, unending love. Okay, yeah, yeah. Come on, men, preach it. <laughs> okay, so that is that is no conditions. That is even if she burns your dosa, <laughs> you love. Or even if she's not behaving the way that you want to you love. Even if she makes you sweep the floor ten times and say, I can't do, you do. You love. Now they're not saying. <laughs> okay, so it's unconditional love. And that also means, what is unconditional love means that you're not expecting anything in return. Just, just loving. Without really saying, ah, okay, I did so much for you or I swept the house, I kept the house clean, what are you doing for me? Nothing. Right? It says without expecting anything in return. So it's that kind of love that's just not there for a day or for a season or just during the honeymoon period. It's very easy to love at that time. no? Yeah, Sapu? So it's very easy to love when you should ask Komal and uh, probably Akil, they'll tell you. Very easy to love that first two months. But after that, when you begin to see the differences, it begins to get harder. Yeah? Koval's not saying anything. Okay? And uh, there is a description of what that love is. And that's what you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. Yeah, so what is it? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is... Yes. Right? So you, you see that, the, that entire characteristic. Can somebody read that out? 13, verses 4 to 8. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 8. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parrot itself. Is not puffed up does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. 
whether there is knowledge it will vanish away yes so you see that kind of love that's the kind of love that as a husband you are called to uh, love your wife okay another part of that love is sacrificial love can you give me an example of a sacrificial love it's rupas correct no rupas right no. okay yeah what is the example of a sacrificial love speak in hindi no problem okay anyone wants to help rupas huh? It, it, it can't ah. okay yeah. it can't ah. first you'll give it to her okay wonderful <laughs> yeah right so yes and sometimes sacrificing when it is really painful is more difficult isn't it you're really hungry there's that one plate of biryani with only that one piece of chicken and uh, you know she likes it a lot you also like it very painful but it is that's that kind of sacrifice that you're willing to deny what you need so that you can you give to your to your spouse or you sacrifice to your spouse so it's that kind of love that builds that where where your wife can feel the sense of safety knowing that this man loves unconditionally okay all right boys okay all right let's look at verse 31 ephesians 5 verse 31 Ephesians 5.31 And this is why a man leaves father and mother and cherishes his wife no longer two. They become one flesh. Okay. What does cherish mean? The word cherish? Huh? To make happy. Okay. Any other meaning? To encourage. To be joyful. Okay. Have there been any time, maybe as a child, you got something that you really wanted, maybe a toy or a cycle or a bike or a ball or something, whatever you got? Yeah. What did you do to it? Yeah, you would keep you like if it was a cycle, you would go clean it, shine, make it shine, make the wheels sparkle. I don't know. Some of you have done that. I've done that. Yeah. So what is that? You you are treating it like the most important thing in your life that's the same thing that's called here cherishing is to treat your spouse your wife as if she is the most important thing person in your life so how can you do that how do you cherish somebody by showing care how how asapu how would you show care Huh? How do you care? What would you do to care? Uh, so tell me, you have you uh, have parents, right? Ah, uh, so how do you care for your parents? You will take responsibility if they need something or if they're sick. Okay, yeah, right. So you cherish them by actually whenever you go home, you talk to them. You ask them how they're doing. You ask them what their needs are. You communicate with them, right? So these are different. Anything that shows that you value them, right? Um, it doesn't only have to be material things. It it it's a lot more of other things. It's that uh, en enjoying their presence, right? G saying good things about them. Okay, saying that she's looking pretty today or her. Her uh, dal chawal is very tasty today. That's the way that you cherish. Okay, yeah, you appreciate, right? So these are some of the ways that you uh, you you cherish her. You also cherish her by uh, 
fulfilling your responsibility and and your role as a husband okay, when you are that example when you are the example that god wants you to be what are you doing you're cherishing the fact that you know i cherish my wife so much that i want to follow through with god wants for me to do okay so that's cherishing okay uh, let's read first first peter chapter 3 verse 7 the same goes for your husbands be good husbands to your wives honor them delight in them as women they lack some of your advantages but in the new life of god's grace you are equals treat your wives then as equals lack some of your uh, so your prayers don't run around okay so what does it say what is that uh, role there be yes uh, no honor them delight in them okay how do you honor somebody by respecting how do you respect somebody giving them more priority more value how do you respect them with your speech you say dear asabu you going to call your wife dear every day nice very nice okay so remember it's just not calling those nice loving names it's also treating them well right you honor them and you treat them well especially in the midst of maybe other people uh treating them also with respect maybe there's a whole number of guests who've come to your house and uh, you're sitting there maybe entertaining your guests while she's slogging in the kitchen what do you want to do you want to honor respect delight in her give her a hand yes so that's how you honor respecting not just in your words but even in your heart and even in in the way that you bring about your actions also it says delight delight is one way of knowing them how do you know your wife how do you know a person by spending time and when you spend time what are you discovering yeah you're discovering what they like what they don't like what that they strong in what are some of their weaknesses what do they enjoy doing what do they not enjoy doing all of that happens when you're communicating so so in all in all you know when when we wrap this entire role it it is to really honor cherish yes your the 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 two uh, roles of leading i mean generally if you ask any husband they will say i am the leader but you know there's so much more to that leading it's about knowing it's about cherishing it's about really building them up okay so ready all the husbands amen okay all right so let's go to the wives now okay this does not mean all the boys sleep here okay and only diksha stay awake okay everyone stays awake all right so let's look at that uh, verse ephesians chapter 5 verse 22 let's read that ephesians 5 verse 22 wives understand and support your husbands in ways that show your support for christ okay uh, we'll also read verse um 24 So just as the church submits to Christ as his exercise such leadership wives should likewise submit to their husbands okay so just so we'll come to submit second we'll we'll go to the first one which talks about understand and support or in other versions it actually talks about love your husbands okay so what is when um uh, about love as as a way that 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 is a role that is given out to um let's say a wife where should that come from it should come from a place of completely accepting the husband as they are so i must tell you this when we got married the uh, the the pastor who got us married he he told us one thing he looked at my husband and said said he told him he said don't try to understand her just love her okay and he told me he said don't just love him understand him okay and at that point of time i really didn't understand what he was trying to say but then as we got into marriage you know 
if you're trying to understand why a man does something, it's very difficult to understand. So, but just love. Don't try to understand them. Just, just love them. But for a woman, for a man, it is to actually understand why is she behaving like this? Why is she saying the things that she's saying? Right? So it, it really made a whole lot of sense when, when the pastor told us that. Okay. <laughs> Not here. Not anywhere in this place. So so the, the, the love that a woman uh, or, a, or, a, or a wife needs to have is uh, the, uh, the, the love that has, one has of that of a friend. And that's the word that is used over here, filio. In the husband's love, it is a love of agape, right? Which is that unconditional love. The love here is filio, which is filia meaning someone you are attracted to, someone like a friend. You're loving your husband as, as a best friend, as a person who walks with you in your, in your journey of life. All right? So that is that kind of love. And this love is not based on what they are doing. It's not based on how perfect the man is. It is based on who they are. So you're not loving them because they have a job or you know they they have a six pack uh, body or they have a fat salary or you know they're great in ministry they, you love them for who they are not for their perfections or imperfections okay all right it is to also that love is to accept every part of him again it is not you are the acceptance comes because of the knowledge that he's in your life because god has placed him there He's like a gift to you that God has God has placed placed him there. The the love of a wife is also sacrificial. That you treat, see that his needs, that he's taken priority of all of that. So it is a sacrificial kind of love. Also, it is a love that is responding to the physical needs of the husband. So that is the love that is spoken about for a wife. Okay. All right. The next one is submit. A lot of people have problems with this, this word submit, because it's often seen as, uh, you know, I have lost myself. There is nothing, no individuality in me. Everything, I, uh, you know, this is the last time I can ever think of my needs. That's not true. Okay. Submission is when you willingly come forward and yield to your husband, when you show your support and your willingness to stand alongside your husband. Okay? That is, you stand in support, submit and stand in support to your husband. Okay? And why? Because, remember we said that the husband is placed there by God on, in that role. And so you're submitting, you're actually submitting to God when you're submitting to your husband. Because you're submitting to the role that God has placed on your husband. So you're in actual, your submission comes to him, to your husband, yes, but it comes also to the Lord, primarily to the Lord. Okay. So when you're submitting, it is not a competition. Who's better? You know, how much of how much more salary am I earning? Uh, you know, do I, uh, you know, can I can I do this better than him? It's not about a competition, but it is something that you collaborate, you work together. Okay, you stand together as a team. So submission. What does submission to your husband mean? Number one, it is obedient to God's word. That's what you're doing when you're submitting. That's what you're doing. You're actually submitting to God. You're also allowing your husband to take his place of being ahead. You're, you're actually permitting that. You know, it's, it's very difficult when a wife refuses to submit and says, no, I want my way done. Would a husband actually be able to take on that place of leadership? It's very difficult. Right? So when you are free when you are submitting you are actually permitting you are actually allowing your husband to take that appointed place that god has 
has put over his life in that marriage. Okay, and you're also um, uh, empowering your husband to lead according to what God wants you to do. So, what is submission? What what does submission not mean? Submission does not mean that you are down or inferior. It doesn't mean that you are um, uh, you know you've lost your personality or your personhood. Neither does it mean that you have to be blindly obedient to whatever he says, using wisdom, using judgment, also finding ways of getting the right counsel, especially when you sense or you feel that your husband is not uh, probably in the right or, or doing things as according to the Lord. It's not only about, it's not about blind obedience, okay? So having a good understanding of what the submission is, okay? The sub so the submission is, uh, fulfilling that role which God has placed for you and also doing so in love. When you're submitting to your husband, you're doing so in love, knowing that he he's taken that responsibility that God has put over him, divinely placed over him. Okay? You had a question. Yeah. New Testament, there's a scripture portion that says, uh, resist the devil, submit uh, yourselves to God and he will flee from you. So is there a parallel? Sorry, submit? submit yourselves to God, submit to God and resist the devil and ah. he will flee from you. Okay. So is there a parallel with that submit and this submit? Not the verse preceding that, but being submissive to God there and here being submissive to the husband. Okay. Uh, I will may need to check the root word for that. Okay. okay. So okay. I may not be able to pick up right now. Let me do it in the break and I, I'll answer that question for you. Okay. All right. Um, let's look at the next. Uh, Next verse, which is uh, verse 20, uh, 24, we finished. Verse 33, Ephesians 5, verse 33. Okay, so all of us, yes. Um, and this provides a good picture of how each husband is to treat his wife, loving himself in loving her, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so what does it say? It is to honor, or in other words, to respect. Okay, respect your husband. So what does respect mean? Respect, yes, uh, as it's written here, it is lifting them up, uh, appreciating them, encouraging them, admiring them. And I, I thought I must, must tell you something that I read, which I found uh, really beautiful, is when you respect your husband, you respect them with your head, with your heart, and with your hands. Okay? Respecting your, with your head, what does it mean? To think thoughts of respect. Sometimes we're very... We may say things that are respectful, but inside, what are we saying? Oh, that man, I'm fed up with him. Right? So, what are we thinking about the person? So, respecting them with your head, respecting with your heart, all right, uh, about the way that you feel about him, and respecting with your hands, things that you do. So, all of this needs to tie together. Respect with your head, respect with your hand, Respect with your heart. Because if there is a mismatch, it will show out in some way. Yeah? Okay. And lastly, of course, it is to help your husband by any kind of support. You're called to be the helper, right? Uh, uh, Eve was called as the helper to her, to her husband. Okay? Now, it's a good thing. Now, this entire book has a lot of practical applications. And it's a good thing for each of you, not like the homework we did last week, where it's incomplete. Go back and write one or one or two ways that you will practice you can practically love your future husband or future wife. Not love. Any of these roles that I say. One or two practical ways that you can do it. Okay? I'm telling you, it's it's a great thing to do it because at that point of view, you'll be scratching your head otherwise. Okay? So do it, go back. 
and say, what is a good way to honor my, uh, my wife or honor my husband? How can I respect my husband? How can I submit to them? What are ways that I can do that? And vice versa. OK? All right. Um, any, any, I mean, any questions? <laughs> any questions here? Roles all clear? All clear. OK. All right, so here's a real life scenario on submission, OK? I'd like one of you to read it out rather than me saying it. Let's let's read that out. It's on page 44 in your books, I think, right? Yeah, can someone read that out? Real life scenario on submission. Shall I, sister? Yes, please go ahead, Lucy. What if the husband is deciding for the family, example, buying property, career change, relocation, etc., but the wife feels that he is making a wrong decision? The husband is not willing or unable to see the wife's perspective and intends to go ahead with his decision. That decision the husband plans to make is not actually wrong, but seems wrong from a practical standpoint. The wife is very concerned that if the husband were to proceed, the entire family will face serious consequences. Should the wife remain submissive, even in a situation like this, how should the wife respond? We can address this. Okay, hang on. Spiritual... Just yeah. a minute, Lucy. Lucy, yes, just a minute. Okay, so yes, what are your thoughts? Without looking into the next paragraph, okay, what are your thoughts? How could, how could a couple handle this? Uh, that is what she's saying. They're, they're not willing. Uh, I mean, rather than the the husband doesn't think it is, it's wrong. So what what do we what do you do? So if you're not on the same page at the inception, for sure it is not going to be lucrative. Even okay. in the forget about long run. Even in the initial stages, definitely it is just not going to last okay. on a peaceful note. Okay. All right. So what should be done? Huh? The wife's opinion, discuss, Consider the opinion, discuss, being more transparent. OK, be transparent. OK, good. OK, so let's read on. Yes, Lucy, you can continue. Yes, sister. We can address this from the scripture, spiritual and practical standpoints. Spiritually, the wife is instructed to submit to the husband. Submission is to yield. It is an act of honor and trust. When the wife submits to the husband, she is not only honoring, honoring God, Submit to the husband. Also, when the wife writes, she has done what she can, but she through even if the decision to be made by the husband seems wrong. From a practical standpoint, the wife could gently and lovingly suggest that they both meet and get the advice of an expert in this area where the decision is about to be made. For example, if it is a decision about buying a property, they could meet with a trustworthy and reliable real estate expert who will be able to give unbiased advice on the matter. Following this, a final decision can be made by the husband. OK. So I think some of the highlights that you see here is um, to go back to lovingly it says, lovingly and gently suggest that they discuss and see somebody. Don't miss those words. What happens when you are, when, when someone thwarts your plans? What does it make us feel? When someone thwarts your plans? Yeah, you don't feel valued. So how do you respond? You probably respond with irritation, with frustration, with anger, with hurt. Yes. So the, the point here is to remember that the way that you respond or the way that you are actually engaging with your husband really matters. When you are able to do it lovingly, gently, calmly, there could be reason in that. And maybe he will be willing to see an expert and will willing to talk about it and then coming to make a decision. 
Okay, so the, our response also matters. Okay, so I think as as women, our response matters to something that you see may not be right or may not be like like it says. It's it's not that it's spiritually wrong. It's just practically it may not make sense to you. So not that there is anything wrong in that, but so how do you respond to that? To doing it in love, to do it with respect. So to have conversations with respect. So that's the main idea that it's talking about here. Okay? All right? Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's where the wife comes in and gently deals with it and says that, you know, maybe I have a difference of opinion. I have a different way that I see it. Can I share it with you? Can we talk about it a little bit more? So that also matters, right? The way that the wife approaches it really matters, right? And and so then making the husband aware that decisions may need to, uh, definitely needs to be made with two people, or the wife saying, you know, it upsets me that uh, you know, my my, folk, my my opinion is not taken or my viewpoint is taken. I'd like that we talk about it a little bit more. So that conversation done lovingly and gently is very important. Okay. All right. Sister, I have a question. Yes. What if the husband, in spite of the expert advice, doesn't agree to take the decision and wants to go ahead with that deal? Okay. So it would it would mean to finally trust and honor uh, the decision that he's made, making, leaving every outcome to God. So remember, uh, Gertrude, the fact that you are doing this in line with scripture. Maybe when, even if the husband may not be willing to take another opinion or not do do something or see the advice on that, uh, because you've come to that point, when you are submitting to your husband, you're doing it actually unto the Lord. Right? Going back to the Lord and saying, God, I've done the best that I can to share this. But I'm being obedient to you and submitting to him, even though I sense this decision is, take control of every matter. Take control of the outcome of this. And you can be sure that when you walk in obedience, God is going to make all things work together for good. Even if a decision doesn't seem right, your obedience is definitely going to bring about a... Uh, uh, you know, a blessing, uh, a blessed, a, a blessing. Does that answer your okay, question? Sister, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sister. All right. Okay. So um, we we the next part of it is we'll just quickly move on to some of the things of how, um, especially for a ministry leader, you know, uh, those of us who are in ministry, those of us who are believers, what are the kind of standards and responsibilities? that the Bible talks about for us. And we will look at that when we come back from our break. Okay?